An investigation by a Spanish NGO has found that China has set up over 50 unofficial police stations. Safeguard Defenders has published a report showing that the Chinese government has set up illegal and secret police stations. I agree that these reports are deeply concerning uh, and I want to be very clear that we take them extremely seriously. Yep, you heard it right. As we speak, it's plausible that if you live in Europe, at this very moment, there are Chinese police officers policing your streets. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? Why is nobody talking about this? How can a foreign country enforce their law outside of their own borders? China is exerting their power in overseas territories with their own cops. Just look at this map. Statistically speaking, the Chinese Communist Party has a foothold on the most influential cities in Europe, not to mention Canada, Japan, Brazil and even their enemy, the United States. These are only a few of the police stations that we have found so far, the list goes on and on. But focusing on the old continent, we see that major cities like London, Paris, Rome, Madrid or even Lisbon are all under the control of the People's Republic of China ranging from wealthy western countries to less fortunate Baltic nations, the spread of power is unbelievable. Like I mentioned in my video about the Eastern European Union, the countries on the east of the continent have seen the influence of China grow larger and larger in recent years. Due to the 17 plus 1 initiative, we are seeing former countries to the left of the Iron Curtain receive huge amounts of money from the Red Dragon, and Serbia is a great example. They have exponentially increased trade with China and the relationships between the governments couldn't be closer. In 2019, they opened official joint patrols in Belgrade, Novi Sad and Smederevo. The first one being the capital, the next one being the second largest city in the country and the third one of the most industrialized. Officially, these mixed patrols were created to help Chinese visitors communicate and feel safe and since the cities are receiving major Chinese investments in industry and infrastructure, this also translates to large numbers of Chinese employees. If this wasn't alarming enough, the police patrols begin together with another security initiative in the capital, the so-called Safe City Project. It's using hundreds of cameras made by the Chinese firm Huawei to survey Belgrade's population using facial recognition technology. Serbia is becoming the China of Europe. And this is just an example. Take a look at this footage from Rome way back in 2016, where another joint patrol is taking place, this time with the Italian police, but you get the picture. This map shows the countries where China has an official international law enforcement corporation, but these so-called overseas Chinese police service stations are a bit different though, due to one little detail, they are totally illegal. They have reportedly been influencing elections in the cities they operate and are set up to antagonize China's adversaries, especially Xi Jinping's critics. The CCP says that these service stations are used to help Chinese nationals living abroad and are aimed to help them file local police reports and other bureaucratic processes, but the report claims that this is a part of a massive nationwide campaign to combat the growing issue of fraud and telecommunication fraud by Chinese nationals living abroad. The Chinese Minister of Public Security himself claimed that 230,000 nationals have already been persuaded to return to face criminal proceedings in China. This campaign, which started on a humble scale in 2018, has developed alongside this establishment of overseas Chinese police service stations, sometimes called 110 overseas after the National Police Emergency Phone Number, now found in dozens of countries across five continents. This is what the leader of the ONG, Laura Arth, had to say to BBC this week. I'm joined now by Laura Harth, who was part of the investigation team that discovered these uh, secret police stations. Thanks very much, Laura, for joining us here on the program. I mean, 50 unofficial police stations across 21 countries. It sounds just extraordinary. 
Yes, and it might just be the tip of the iceberg. These are the ones that we managed to document, um, just taking into account official Chinese authorities' sources. So we did not uh, invent anything. We just took them for their word. And I think the most worrying thing of, of this is how brazen it is all getting. Um, the introduction gave a quite good uh, overview of how these persuasion to return methods work, threats, harassment, guilt by association, punishment of family members back home, sending covered agents abroad or using these kind of stations to persuade, coerce people into returning to, to China. Obviously, as safeguard defenders, we know we've been documenting these kind of methodologies, um, especially in our report, prior report, involuntary returns. We know how this is part of a nationwide um, framework that has been set up by the Chinese Communist Party to really crack down on dissent and hunt people down across the world to make sure that the overseas Chinese, that the diaspora communities, and I'm thinking in particular also of those ethnic religious minorities, Uyghurs, Tibetans, Falun Gong, but also, for example, Hong Kong activists, how they would remain silent or be coerced to return if not. Since this report came out, more and more of these police stations have been uncovered, but still, the information on this topic is very scarce. A recent documentary piece by the news station Voice of America has shown great examples of this new reality. In one instance, they showcase a Chinese suspect living in Madrid being remotely prosecuted for allegedly causing environmental pollution back in his hometown. In the footage, we can see a relative next to the lawyers as a representative of the suspect's family, a disturbing new tactic that persuaded the suspects to come home to be charged by the officials. Right after, they personally went to one of the stations in North London, where they were denied any link to the Chinese government and refused to do an interview. The last one, and most shocking, was when Finn Lau, the leader of the 2019 Hong Kong protests, fled to Britain for its own security, but it was attacked in 2020 right next to his home by three masked men who were convinced were working for the Chinese government. I don't really feel safe in London, especially after uh, the physical or near-death assault uh, in London. Because, well, uh, for years we have many different uh, Hong Kong and Chinese citizens being uh, followed or assaulted uh, by the Chinese Communist Party by different means. In an email to VOA, the Chinese embassy in London said the Safeguard Defenders report is full of speculation and lies, adding that China fully respects judicial sovereignty, but when a Chinese population in London's Chinatown were asked if they knew the existence of such stations, they all refused to show their faces to the camera. Even the UK government refused to confirm whether or not they knew about them, or even if they were being investigated. But the United Kingdom is not alone. From what I could gather, no European authorities were aware of this. Look at how the Portuguese minister reacted when asked about this situation. Enquanto primeiro-ministro de Portugal e responsável pelos serviços de informações no governo, pergunto-lhe: são estas questões do conhecimento do governo português e pode confirmar a sua veracidade? E em caso afirmativo, o que é que está o governo português e os serviços por si diretamente tutelados a fazer? para parar estas patentes violações dos direitos humanos, da soberania e segurança nacionais. Muito obrigado, Sr. Presidente. Sr. Deputado Coutinho de Figueiredo, a resposta é muito fácil. Não tenho nenhum conhecimento e seguramente os serviços também não têm, senão já me teriam, já me teriam dado. These police stations cause internal security concerns for the whole world and a threat to sovereignty of the concerned nations. National sovereignty is an obligation as well as an entitlement. China has even designated nine forbidden countries as having serious tax fraud, telecom fraud and web crimes, and Chinese nationals are no longer allowed to stay in those countries without good reason. If this can happen right in the heart of Europe, in rich and developed countries without anyone noticing, I can only imagine how the situation is like in Africa, for example where the Chinese influence has completely taken over the continent. But who am I kidding? I don't need to imagine. China made security deals with various leaders, has implemented censorship technology in a scary number of countries, and has built the African Union headquarters, where it was caught spying on them and offered to rebuild the network system for free. Do you see what I'm trying to say? 
Chinese money is hard to deny it in a region that desperately needs it, so the continent has already been flooded with it. Europe is now desperately trying to fix that with a global gateway program, but only time will tell if the decision was taken too late. Make sure to check my video on it and don't forget to leave a like on this one and share it so more people are aware of the situation.